In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to set up synchronization of the website's games, practices, team events, and tournaments to your Team Snap team. Now, before we get started, we're going to have the following assumptions. You are the team webmaster in the website for your team, and you are also the manager of your Team Snap team. This process is five quick steps as listed on the screen. And we will go through each one of those steps now. So step one is to purchase the synchronization feature. Now there will be cases where the association may have purchased the synchronization feature on your behalf and this won't be required. To find out, simply go within the Manage Site Content module for your team and choose the Team Snap Synchronization option. If the page that is prompting you for payment shows up, then that means that you need to pay for it prior to enabling this, the, the synchronization. We strongly recommend taking a look at all the instructions on the screen. And once you're done, go ahead and click the Click Here to Pay Online button. That will redirect you off to a PayPal page where you'll be able to either sign in with your existing PayPal account, or if you'd like to just pay with a major credit card, simply click the button below to pay with a credit or Visa debit card. Fill in your transaction details, and once the payment has been submitted, You'll either have a receipt page that will have a button on it to return to the website, or you'll be automatically redirected back to the website. Once payment has been completed, or if your team doesn't require payment, we can continue on to step two, which is to authorize the website to access your TeamSnap account. So again, we're gonna go back to the TeamSnap synchronization page, and this time, assuming pay payment has been successful, you'll have an option to allow the TeamSnap synchronization. Again, what this is going to do is take you to, the, your, to a login page on TeamSnap where you will then authorize MB Sports Web as an application to be able to access your account. So if we click the button, we're taken to our TeamSnap login page. We can go ahead and log in. It will then say that authorization is required. Do we want to authorize MB Sports Web to use your account? The website needs to be able to view all your information and to write information to your account. So go ahead and hit authorize. And that will then re redirect us back to the website and back on the synchronization page. Step three is to choose which Team Snap team you want to synchronize with. So, in a lot of cases, there will be just one team in your Team Snap account. However, if you do have more than one, we're going to be able to choose which one we want to synchronize with. The list of teams available are the ones that are in Team Snap marked as um, not archived, so uh, current teams, and teams that you are a manager for. So we're going to go ahead and choose Rep Team 1 as our Team Snap team in this case and hit synchronize with this team. So step four is to complete an, an, an initial synchronization. And what that means is after we've chosen our team, the website is going to show us what it's about to do with your Team Snap account. So it tells us that it's never synchronized before. It's going to add 18 locations is going to add seven opponents that don't already exist in our Team Snap account. Now, in this case, this particular Team Snap team is new. There is nothing in that Team Snap account, so it's going to be adding everything. So, we're in the list of pending synchronization changes, it says in the ID that it's going to add all these new things. It's not going to notify the teams for most events, except for the ones that are relatively close to the current date and time, and then continue on from there. It also shows whether they're events or if they're games, and for games, whether or not they're home or away games. So we go ahead and click Synchronize Schedules Now, and that will then do an initial synchronization with my team in TeamSnap. And again, in this scenario, my TeamSnap team was brand new. There were no events, so everything's going to be added. So here we have a confirmation that it added 18 locations, seven opponents, and 53 events were added. Now in a different scenario, perhaps you're enabling the synchronization in the middle of the season, and you wanted to merge everything that's in the website with what already exists inside TeamSnap. So that's a little tricky, trickier scenario, but the same thing, we're going to go ahead and allow TeamSnap synchronization for Team 2 here. It didn't ask me to log in, and it didn't ask me to verify because I was already logged in. It took me right back to the page where I'm going to choose which team. So this time we're going to choose Team 2, synchronize with this team. 
And this time, again, we've never synchronized with this team. It's going to say, again, we're going to add 17 locations. This time, no opponents. And for each of the events, we'll notice that there actually is an ID specified. And that is the ID of that event inside a team snap. Um, and this is because it found events that existed in my team snap account. Now, I did find also one that's going to add. So we recommend looking, taking a close look at this list to see what it's doing to, um, to make sure it doesn't do anything you don't want to do on that first sync. We also have below the list of pending changes a list of events that are inside a team snap that are not going to be changed. So here we have an event that was created which does not exist on the website. So as it shows, it's going to leave that alone. For each of the things that it's going to update, again, it will also indicate whether or not it intends to notify the team upon uh, making a change or adding that event. In the case of an initial synchronization to an existing set of events, it will, for the most part, not prompt update. That is assuming that the only thing that's changing is the notes. So if you hover over each of the updates, it'll actually tell you what field it's going to be updating. Go ahead and hit synchronize schedules now. And again, once it's complete, it will then tell us at the top that last synchronization happened right now. 17 locations were added, two events were added, and 47 were updated. So once that initial synchronization has been completed, we're going to go ahead and look at some of the other settings that are available and to enable auto synchronization. So still on the same team snap synchronization page, we have the ability to set your default arrive before times. So one of the things that you can do in team snap for every event is to indicate when you'd like the, the members of your team to show up as the arrive before time. By default, we're going to set practices, home games, and away games to the settings shown, but you can override this. So if you want your team to show up an hour before practices, maybe two hours before home games, or an hour and a half, you can set all those up in the website, and only when things are added to your Team Snap account will it use these settings. If you have an arrive before time already set inside a Team Snap for any of your events, it will not change that in any scenario. So similarly, if it adds a new practice with a one hour arrive before time, but for a, any particular practice you want to change that, you can go ahead and change that in TeamSnap and the website will leave that alone. Another thing is the logging email address. So this will be set to the person who was logged in at the time when we created the synchronization in the first place, which would be you in most scenarios. So we want to make sure that you have this logging email address set um, just so you can kind of get an idea of what's happening with your uh, Team Snap account from the website synchronizations. Um, every time that there's a manual synchronization, as we did for the initial, or if there's an automatic synchronization, um, which we'll show in a second, it will send an email to this address just as a notification that the synchronization happened. Included in that will be how many events, locations, opponents were added uh, during that synchronization. Also, if auto-synchronization is not enabled, every time that the website um, would normally have done a synchronization but didn't because auto-sync was not turned on, it will also send an email to that logging email address to let them know there are events changes pending. We didn't do a synchronization because you haven't enabled the auto-sync, so either go back to the website to do a manual synchronization or come in and turn on the auto-synchronization. Other options include whether or not we want to synchronize our tournaments and team events. So um, your tournaments can be uh, added from the website to your Team Snap account. Same thing with your team events. Just turn those on and off by hitting include and save. And that will actually refresh this page to indicate whether or not by adding your tournaments and team events, it's going to add more information to your Team Snap account. In this case, in our, in our demo team, there is no tournaments or events in there, so it didn't make a difference. But the last thing and the most important one is the auto sync. So if you're happy with what the website does in, in terms of the manual synchronization and you want to just have that happen automatically whenever something changes, go ahead and turn on auto sync and save that. And going forward now, anytime something changes in the website with your schedule, within 15 minutes of that happening, because it happens on a timer, um, it could happen instantly, it might happen no more than 15 minutes. 
Um, it will do a synchronization in the background as if you just click that button and it will go ahead and make those changes to your Team Snap account.